This video is going to give you a little bit of help on how to get started with the Under the Sea number three CNC project. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new file. Now for this layout, we're going to use a, uh, a job size of 10 inches by 10 inches. Our material thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. The datum will be set to the center. And we're going to use a very high modeling resolution. And of course, we're going to use our, our units will be in inches. We're going to click OK. And we're going to go over to our clip art tab and we're going to find our under the sea number three project. Um, I want to point out a couple things to start with. First of all, this is a little bit different than the under the sea number one and under the sea number two. In the under the sea number one and two, we've included a wavy tile that's been connected by a very, very thin surface. So this kind of limits you to how you can scale this um, up and down and and use it, which was important because we wanted to make sure that the the uh, wavy tile from under the sea number one and under the sea number two could hook together end to end to create a very long layout. Um, but we did have some customers ask us for a model that we could they could use to cap off the ends. And so in this case, in under the sea number three, we have given you those end bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to make a square frame with the end of the scene number three, and then I will show you how to um, use those end bits to cap off the end of a larger layout. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in both of these wavy tiles. And I'm going to point out that, note that both of them are exactly the same shape height to them. So at this point when they're brought in, I haven't done any scaling at all, they um, will fit together quite nicely. So we're going to keep that in mind while we lay this out. Now if we go ahead and we move this, um, the wavy tile and the top, you'll notice that this profile matches perfectly. So these fit together and if they're merged, they overlap perfectly to create a rectangle. There we go. A nice thick. Now this this might not seem like much, but if you needed something for a plaque piece on another project, then this might be a nice way to fill in some space so that you can do some V carving where you might not, where there's like a, um, a strange texture or something like that going on. You could merge this in and, and block that out so you could do some V carving. So what we're going to do is holding down the shift key, I'm going to drag this one up and we're going to make an L shape. So we're going to make the corner of a frame. So holding down the shift key, oh sorry, we're going to actually need to rotate this fella around here. So we're going to double click on the bottom bit. We're going to hold down the shift key and grab the rotate handle. And we're going to rotate that around. Now also notice that we're doing this in the, in the 3D view and I'm doing it very dynamically. I'm not going to type in a whole lot of values um, unless I need to be very specific. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to hold down the shift key and we're going to select both of those pieces. Now I'm doing this in vCarve Pro. All the tools that I'm going to use um, are also available in vCarve Desktop and Aspire. So if you have either one of those pieces of software, you can uh, use the same tutorial. We're going to click on our drawing tab and we're going to align these. So first of all, we're going to align this guy to the edge of um, this one. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then we're going to go ahead and align it so that this corner meets this corner. There we have a nice um, L shape. And we're going to make sure that these are centered in the middle of our job space. So we're going to select them both with the shift key and we're going to press F9 and that will center that L shape. Now seeing as it's the corner of a box, it's, it's actually centering it a box shape, which is really nice because if I click this again, hold down the shift key and at the same time hold down the control key, I'm going to make a copy of this L so that I can make a nice box or a square frame. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have this a slightly different shape. So I'm going to take this end and I'm going to flip it top to bottom so that this bump is in a slightly different area. So we're going to go ahead and flip that. We're, going to create, we're not going to create a mirrored copy, but we're going to flip on the vertical. There we are. I'm going to close that down. That's perfect. I like that shape. Now, again, we're going to. I would like to point out that these are all the exact same um, Z height, so or shape height. So we're going to go ahead and shift select all of those. We're going to go to our 2D view and we're going to right click 
And we're going to go ahead and group all of those together. When we group those together, vCarve Pro will create one um, group of components. So if we look at our modeling tree over here, you'll see that we have wavy tile end number one group. And if we open that group up, there's actually four pieces in it, which is perfect. And what this will allow us to do is that we can scale this or size it up to be the size we want it to be. And the Z height will always be the same for all three, all four parts. So that's a good size right there. I like that. And now this is one of those parts where I'm actually going to type in a value. So we're going to go over to our, uh, we're going to stay on our modeling tab and we're going to click the spanner or the wrench. And we're going to go ahead and change our shape height. Now we have a, my material thickness for this job was three quarters of an inch, but I only want to use half an inch of that for my actual layout. So we're going to change this to 0.5. And this is going to be the proudest um, part, the proudest surface on our layout. That way it will be at the very top of our board and we can surface it if we'd like. And also we can easily v-carve a saying in there if we want to. In this case, I'm not going to, but that's just a, a note for you. We're going to click close. We're going to go back to our clip art tab and we're going to go ahead and double click on the wavy texture. And with vCarve Pro, um, it automatically merges in um, the next model into your layout. Now, if it doesn't merge, you can right click and you can go ahead and change the combined mode. So it may come in in a spire looking like that, which isn't what you want. So right click on that and you can go ahead and go to merge. And you'll see that this green area is the actual part of this texture that's inside of or, or has been merged inside of your frame. So we can go ahead and scale that up. I want those waves to be a little bit bigger. And then I want to rotate that just by holding the shift key down and that will lock it so that it won't, um, it'll actually uh, incrementally rotate. That's what I'd like to see. Looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and bring in the sea urchin. We're going to size the sea urchin to fit inside of that shape. A little bit smaller. We want to make sure that we have enough room for our cutter to get into the edge here. And then we're going to, instead of using the, the, the modeling and then the wrench or spanner, we're going to use the, the blue properties dialog here. It's a floating dialog, so we can pull that to wherever we want it to be. And we're going to go ahead and change some of the shape height and the base height. We're going to make this 0.35. And then we're going to make the base height 0.1. And so as long as when you add these two values up, it doesn't exceed the 0.5 that we made um, the shape height of the frame, then we're golden. So I think that's great. It's going to be um, 0 0.05 lower than the edge. So we're going to have, um, we're going to remove material around this whole urchin and that's going to look really great. Along with the, the Z height that we have here, it's going to give some nice definition to the sea urchin. And then for the last piece, I want to add in a little bit of extra sort of oomph to the layout. So we're going to use our single smooth rock. And we're going to bring that in and we're going to go ahead and Move that down here. We're going to rotate it a little bit maybe and size it up just a bit. Now we're going to give this a bit of a shape height again. And we need this, sorry, the base height. And what we, we need the base height so that it will raise above the, the texture that we have here. That looks great. We're going to hold down the control key while we just move this over to this area. And to make it look like a different rock, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it around so it's a different shape on this corner. Something like that there. I kind of like that layout. So we're going to hit close. Maybe we're just going to, just to be a little fussy, we're going to turn that guy like that. There we go. So that's a great looking layout. It looks like it's a little picture into what the bottom of the ocean looks like. Now, if we were going to show this to a customer, it might be nice to give them a really nice um, rendering of this. So we're going to go over here to view and we're going to use the shadow shade view. And that gives us a nice shading going on, shading effect. And then we can go view and we're going to hide the modeling plane. And now if you wanted to email this to a customer or if you want to show it to your wife, or maybe you just want to make sure it's exactly what you want, then you can look at it with the shadow shade on. It gives us some nice contrast. Now I'd like to show you how to cap off the ends of a much longer um, layout. So I'm going to bring up a spire and you can do all of this in vCarve Pro. Um, or vCarve desktop, and if I do something that you can't, uh, I'll identify that. So right now we have this nice long layout, and this is a hack. It's, used, it's using all kinds of different models from all three of the Under the Sea projects. Um, but 
our customer wants the ends capped off here. So if we use the wavy tile ends, we can cap off the ends of this layout and come up with a really great layout. Um, like the customer likes. If you were gonna make a coffee table and you wanted to have the open ends, so it looked like the water was kind of flowing off the end of your coffee table, this would be a great option. But if you're gonna put this on your wall and you want it to look more like a framed piece, or maybe it needed to look more like a, a headboard, <clears throat> then this might be perfect. And then with the addition of some text, you can have a nice um, uh, piece of wall art for your cottage or home or uh, maybe your um, in your sea or ocean themed restroom. Anyway, so I hope that helps. Oh, the, the part that you can't do in vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop is actually generate this text. This text, text is actually a model. And this is something that I, I generated in Aspire just so that I didn't have to do tooling to show you how that looks. Anyway, I hope that helps.